Now we are reviewing for test on chapter one. Here's a problem that you'll see something like this. I'm looking at number six on the worksheet. Okay, so these numbers I put down are straight from the worksheet. All right, so let's take a look at it. It says find the length of DE. So find the length of line segment DE. If, now watch what it says. I'm not going to write this down, but I'll just say it. It says D is between points C and E. So let's draw. Remember I said yesterday when I was going over this, or at least going over the answers? I said draw the thing out. Now look what it says. D is between C and E. So what are you going to do? I'll put a C right here and what? An E right there. So where is D? Okay, is it in the middle though? Does it have to be in the middle? It's somewhere in between, right? It could be anywhere. Let's just make it right here just so that we don't think it has to be in the middle. Now, it could be in the middle, all right, but it doesn't have to be, right? It just has to be somewhere in between C and E. Everybody okay with that? This is what I would do. I promise you, I would do this if I was saw this problem in front of me and I had to get the right answer. Let's say I was making up an answer key or something. This is exactly what I would do. So if I would do it this way, you definitely should do it. Now, it tells you what CD is. It says CD is uh, 6.5. So from there to there is 6.5. And then it says CE. The length of CE is 13.8. So what's CE? Is it from here to here? No, it's, the whole it's the whole thing, right. All right, you can draw this any way you want. But the whole thing is 13.8. Everybody see that? The question says find uh, DE. So where is DE? It's just this part of it, isn't it? All right, so that's what we want to find. Now look, what do they give you? They give you the whole thing, and they give you part of the whole thing. So what's the math involved to find out what is left over? Right, when you say what is left over, or what is the difference between them, all right, that's subtraction. So you just subtract. So it's just 13.8 minus 6.5, okay? It's not always going to be subtraction. They could have done this. They could have given you DE and asked for CE, couldn't they? You follow me? All right. They could have given you DE, right, the value of DE and CD. They could have given you those two. What would you do if they gave you CD and they gave you DE? You would add them up to get CE. Follow me? Yeah. All right. So it's good to see it in front of you because it'll tell you whether you need to add or subtract. So that's what? Three and that's seven. So that's your answer right there. So that is 7.3. Now, again, they could have given you CD is 6.5 and DE is 7.3 and asked you to find CE. Then you would have to add them together. Okay. So it's just a matter of knowing what to do. The math wasn't hard. That wasn't the hard part. It was knowing what to do, whether to add or subtract or whatever you're supposed to do there. Make sense? I drew it out. Was that drawing on that worksheet at all? It was not. Okay. It told it to you in words, but um, I drew it as well. All right, so that's what you want to do there. Let's take, take a look at number seven. You'll see something like that. All these problems that I'm showing you today are probably problems that will show up, or, you know, problems that are something like it, not exactly, but something like it right. on the test. All right, they tell you, um, now this time they actually do draw the picture out for you. Okay. And they say that this is 8. Now watch what they do here. They say this is 2x plus 7. So I don't know exactly how long it is, do I? Because I don't know what x is. So guess what we're going to have to find, do you think? Find what x is, exactly. And they tell you this as well. Watch. From here to here, they draw it like this. Without that little squiggly thing I drew earlier. Um, this is 4x plus 3. Okay, this is what they give you, and they ask you to find the length of x z. So I'll put x z equals question mark. So which one is x z? It's the whole entire thing, isn't it? So I kind of know the whole entire thing, kind of, right? It's four x plus three. What's my only problem though? Got to find x. That's right. So I got to find x. So I got to set up some kind of an algebra problem in order to solve for x. So let's take a look at what's going on. Look at this little segment right here. It's basically what we did earlier. What was true about that 6.5 and that 7.3? What did they do? They added up to be what? 13.8. Agreed? Look at here. It's pretty much the same thing, isn't it? Except you don't know exactly. Look, you know this part, which is 8. You know this part, which is 2x plus 7. What do they do? 
they don't just equal. Let's say, they uh, yeah, they add up, okay? They add up to equal, okay? That's a big difference, okay? Because a lot of people keep saying that. It equals, it equals. They add up to equal 4x plus 3. So let's add them up. I'm going to put the 2x plus 7 first. Is that all right? I won't bother you, will it? So 2x plus 7 plus 8 equals the whole thing. What's the whole thing? 4x plus 3. All right, and now we just do some algebra. All right, that was your geometry. That was taking the picture, setting it up. That was the part that most people are struggling with. The math part, I don't think too many people are struggling with, but it's setting it up. So it's 2x plus 15 equals 4x plus 3. Subtract 2x from both sides. Just do this very quickly. Uh, subtract a 3 from both sides. That cancels. That cancels. Uh, what do we get here? 12 equals 2x, right? Divide by 2, and x is 6. Is that my answer? Do I circle it? No, because what do they ask for? You're right. They ask for x is z, so you got to plug it in. So x is 6. You're going to plug it in to that one right there, okay, for the whole entire thing. So it's going to be 4 times what? 6, and then plus 3. That's 24 plus 3 is 27. So the whole length of that thing is 27. So 7, All right. the answer is 27. answer is 27 because it says find the length of x, z. All right? Let's find another one, good one to do. Uh, is 14 going to be on there? 14. I could have something like that. I don't know if it's exactly that, but um, let's do that one. Actually, let, let, yeah, we'll do that. We'll, let's skip around. We can skip around a little bit. That's fine. Since you asked about it. Uh, let's make these. Oops. Sorry. sorry about that. All right, let's make these lines white, and then I'll make the letters and words red. All right, kind of looks like that. And uh, let's see. That's U, Z, V right there. This is W. This is T. All right. And then they put some lengths in here. These are not angles, okay? How do you know the difference if it's an angle or a length of a line segment? Because an angle would have a what in it? A thing? Well, now, like if they said that this was 30, if they say this is 30, how do I know it's not the length? Well, it would be degrees. You'd have a degree symbol, wouldn't you? All right? But you don't have any degree symbols on the on this problem, do you? So it means it's the length of these segments. So if I put that 3y, y, 3y minus 1 right here, what is that measuring? What's the length of that? It's from where to where? From u to z. It's line segment uz, isn't it? Do you see that? So if I put a 3y minus 1 right there, it's this line segment right here. And then I put a 3y plus 1 right there. Um, this is 2y plus 6. And this is 3x minus 2. All right, 3x minus 2. What line segment is the length of 3x minus 2? It's t what? Tz. What about the 2y plus 6? Vz. What about 3y plus 1? Zw. Everybody see that? So that's what they're telling you right there. Now, they do tell you something else in the instructions. It says find the value of x and y. So we're finding x and y. x and y. It says if... If u, v, line segment u, v, bisects, what does that mean to bisect something? Not just cross it, but more specifically, what's that prefix bi mean? It intersects it into two equal parts, okay? So it hits it in the middle, right? That's basically what it's doing. So it bisects uh, tw and, oops, and also uh, u, v is equal to 40. All right, so let's see what's going on here. Let's go to a different color now. Uh, UV bisects TW. Let's see this. Here's UV, and it bisects TW. Everybody see that? So what must be true then? That this and this are equal to each other. Now, it would be really nice if we could just set these equal to each other, but there's a little problem there, isn't there? If I try to set these equal, what's the problem if I set these equal to each other? Yeah, one's x and one's y. Exactly right. Okay, so we got a little problem there. So we got to figure out something else. Let's see what else they tell us. Uv is 40, right? So from here to here is 40. 
Um, how can I draw that? Maybe like this. Now remember, what did it say? It said UV bisects TW, right? You see it? UV bisects TW. So this one's split in half. Even though this might look like it, is UV split in half? No, it doesn't say it's split in half. So we can't say that this equals this. But what do they do? Just like we've done, we've done this twice already. Look at this segment right here, UZ, and look at this segment right here, ZV. What do they do? What's the relationship? They say it, Summer. They add up to 40, exactly right. Do you see that? This and this add up to be 40. Nowhere in here does it say that they're equal to each other. I mean, they might be, I don't know, all right? But it doesn't say that they're equal. So I can't just set them equal to each other, but they do add up to be that whole entire 40. So let's do that. So 3y minus 1 plus 2y plus 6 equals 40. And now what can we solve for here? Now we can solve for y. Good. So let's do this quickly. 3y plus 2y is 5y. Negative 1 plus 6 is plus 5 equals 40. Subtract a 5, and that's 35. Divide by 5, and that is 7. So that's one of my answers, isn't it? Because it said solve for x and y. So I've got one of them. How in the world is that going to help me solve for x? Because I can't plug a 7 into this, can I? But I can plug a 7 into this thing right here for that y. So, and remember, this and this are equal to each other, right? All right. So let's, let's put the 7 into this. So what's that going to be? 3 times 7 plus 1. 3 times 7 is 21 plus 1 is 22. So that line segment right here is 22. Well, guess what this is? That's going to be 22 as well. Why? Because they're equal to each other because it's being bisected. You see it? So you really got to think a little bit on these. Okay, but it's kind of fun after you start figuring out what's equal to each other and all that and how to set the stuff equal. All right, so if this segment is 22, guess what this is? That's 22 as well. So let's do that. 3x minus 2 equals 22. Add a 2, which is 24. Divide by 3, which is 8. Why did I put W? <laughs> I have no idea. W just popped in there out of the blue, didn't it? It's supposed to be an X. All right, and x is equal to 8, and there's your answer right there, 7 and 8, or 8 and 7. All right, there you go. You could see something similar to that on the test, so be ready for that. Here's a couple I want to make sure we hit. Um, let's do number 10, distance formula. It says find the distance between two points. Now, they say between A and B. I'm not going to put a graph on there, and make, I'll just give you the two points. Is that all right? So I'll give you the ordered pairs and say find the distance between those two points. So uh, point A, it's what? 1, 2, 3, negative 3, 1. So what if I just give you these points and I say find the distance between these two points? And B, let me count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 4. All right, so here's the question. It will say find the distance. Go back on the YouTube videos when I first started teaching this, and I bet you anything, you know, one of the things I'm going to say on there is make sure you keep straight between the distance and the midpoint formula because so many students year after year get it confused which one's the distance and which one's the midpoint. And sure enough, in this class and the other class, I've had several kids in here get confused between the distance formula and the midpoint formula. And I gave you fair warning, didn't I? I gave you fair warning to make sure you keep them straight. So make sure you know the which one is distance and which one is midpoint. All right, so let's write it out. The distance formula. This is what it is. It's very much like Pythagorean theorem. You have to memorize this, okay? I was approached by a couple people that said, not students, but even adults, and said, well, do you think maybe you should not have them memorize this? And I thought about it for about two seconds, and I'm like, no, they need to memorize this. This is something that you should know. All right. There are certain things that I won't have you memorize, like all those volume formulas and, and surface area and all that kind of stuff. This is something I think is important for you to memorize, so you should memorize this. So what goes in here? Yeah, subtract. It doesn't really, oh, well, not why. It doesn't matter what order you subtract them in, but subtract the x's, put them in here, and then subtract the y's and put them in here. Square them, add them up, take the square root, and you're done. So let's do that. Let's figure out what's going to go on here. So I keep the square root. Don't forget that square root. I've seen several people in here 
start working this out thinking they're going to put the square root on at the end and they forget and then it's wrong. So make sure you keep it right here. So let's do this. All right, this means subtract the x's. Which ones are the x's right here? The first ones, right. It's the negative 3 and the positive 4. So we subtract them. So it's negative 3, what? Minus 4. That's the first two. That's the x's. Let's do the y's and subtract them. So what's that going to be? 1 minus 4. All right. So far, so good. Let's figure out what's inside of here. Negative 3 minus 4. You've got to be able to do that math. Add a line, change a sign, right? And that what Ms. Swam said? So what is that? Negative 7. Negative 7 squared, right? So put a negative 7 right there. What about this? What's 1 minus 4? It's negative 3. Okay, you gotta know the gotta know the rules. Okay, if you don't know the rules, use a calculator for goodness sakes. If I see somebody else pass a note, I'm grabbing it and you're gonna get an SLD. It's the second time I've seen that. I'm trying to let I'm trying to give you a chance to um to watch what's going on, all right? I'm trying to help you out for this, and you guys just are not using the time wisely. Negative 7 squared, what's that? Is it negative? 49. It's positive 49, because when you square a negative, you get a positive, right? Because negative times negative is positive. Negative 3 squared is positive 9, okay? Work this thing out, what's that, 58? So it would be the square root of 58. And I'm fine if you just leave it like that. You don't have to put it in your calculator. It saves you a few seconds not to put it in a calculator. All right? And you're going to need, I promise you, listen to me, you will need every second that you get tomorrow. So from the minute you walk in, you need to be prepared to take the test. Don't say, i got to go to the bathroom. i got to do this. i got to do that. No. You come in, take all your books off your desk, ready as soon as the bell rings, maybe even before the bell rings. I'm handing out answer sheets, and I'm handing out the test and you've got the whole class period to work, but you must, listen to me, you must finish by the end of the class. I've designed it. I actually retweaked it a little bit last night so that you could finish within one class period. Okay, I put some extra problems on there that you didn't have to do all this stuff. You didn't have to do some math. You just look at it, write down an answer. I purposely did that so that you can finish this test in class. If you can't finish the 20 problems in, in 40 minutes, then you just don't know what you're doing. If you're just sitting there and just staring at it and staring off into space, you're wasting your time, okay? And you don't know what you're doing. You have to know what you're doing. Don't sit there and waste all your time on one problem. Do the ones you can do first, and then the ones that you struggle with, wait to the end and try those. Remember, you have that second day to do corrections. So even if you don't even answer it the first day, you still have a chance to get three out of five points the second day, all right? So keep that in mind. I'm holding to that. All right, let's do another one. Let's do midpoint. All right, that was distance. This time we're going to do the midpoint formula because at first it kind of looks the same because they give you two ordered pairs and it kind of looks like it's the same thing, but it's a completely different problem. So um, it says of CD, so let's find what C is. So this first point is negative 2, negative 1. And the second point, D, is, uh, let's see, let me count, 1, 2, 3, 4, Five, and let's count down one, two, three, four. So it's five, negative four. All right. So here it is. I give you two points, and this is the way it's going to look on the test. You don't have to look at the graph, figure out what the points are. I'll actually give you the ordered pairs of the points. And it says find the midpoint. Let's write the midpoint formula down. Remember, it's a point. I just don't understand what's going through your mind when people start doing this stuff for midpoint. That's not a point, is it? That's just a number. It's a distance. A midpoint is a point, so you must have an ordered pair. If you don't have an ordered pair, you don't know what you're doing. You have no clue what it means to find a midpoint if you start plugging stuff into that distance formula. This is a point, all right? And so you got to know what to do to find that point. Remember, it's a midpoint. It's halfway. So what do you always do when you find halfway? You divide by 2, don't you? So you must have over 2. Now, if you wanted to find the distance, remember a long time ago we talked about going to McDonald's and stuff like that. How do you find the midpoint? What do you do? You add up the two endpoints, right? You add them, don't subtract. You add them together and divide by 2. And you do the same thing with the y's. Add the two y's together and divide by 2. It's very, very simple. You just have to know what to do. It's very easy to do. You just got to know the formula. So let's do it. I'm going to put over 2 and over 2 right off the bat. Now, what do I do with my x's? I don't subtract them this time. What do I do to them? I add them up. So it's going to be negative 2 plus 5. Let's do the y's. Remember, this, those were our x's, right? Now, what are our y's? 
It's negative 1. Now watch very carefully. It's negative 1 plus what? Negative 4. All right, and let's just figure out what this is. Negative 2 plus 5 is 3 over 2. All right, and negative 1 plus negative 4 is negative 5 over 2. I know for some of you, you have a hard time leaving your answer like that. But that's perfectly fine. Remember, time is of the essence, okay? So we want to make sure that you don't waste time. Don't waste time sticking that into a calculator or trying to figure out what the mixed number is or anything like that. Just keep it like that. That is perfectly fine. If you did this on a test, I'd put a little check mark, which means you got it right, okay? This is how I would rather you keep it like this, to tell you the truth, because it just saves some time, all right? Let's find another good one. Uh, number 13, I'm not going to, I didn't put anything like that on the test, okay? So if you look at worksheet number 13, um, I'll tell you what, while I'm thinking about it, what I'm going to do in the next period class, in the fifth period geometry class, I'm going to do the same thing I'm doing now, but I'm going to pick different problems, okay? So what you can do, now you've heard these problems in this class, if you want to see the other problems that I didn't get to today, go to the other video, go to the fifth period video, all right, and you can watch the different problems, I did, and I'll tell that class to look at these problems, okay? So you'll have both of them on there that you'll, you have that ability to go look at, all right? So if we don't get to something in here, we'll get to it in the other class, all right? So you can see it in both. Sean? 16? All right, let's do that. We might have enough time to do that. And I may possibly repeat something in the other class, but I'll try to hit the ones that we didn't hit in here. All right. I, yeah, most of them will be. I mean, they're not all going to be exactly the same, but I'd say for the most part. Uh, you're going to hang on to them, actually, so you can study from them, okay? Actually, let's see. Out like that. All right, that's pretty close. Good enough for us. So let's put some. Uh, look what it says. It says, "Oh, I got to put some letters in here." Oh, I hate rushing. There's E. Oh, there's a D that goes straight down too, doesn't there? Like that. All right, so E is right in the middle. That's D. This is B. G. I'll have this thing drawn out. The bell's going to ring a bit. And then F. And then A. All right, let's see what it says. It says EA and EB are opposite rays. EA and EB, which means this is a straight line. That's the only thing you really care about that. Okay, but then here's the important thing. It says EC, ray EC bisects angle FEG. Let's take a look at that. Ray EG, which one's, I'm sorry, EC. Okay, EC bisects FEG. Well, where's EC? Let's draw this in a different color. Um, see that one right there? It bisects angle FEG, this one right here. So what does that tell you about this little angle right here and this little angle right here? That they have to be equal to each other because it bisects it so... This angle right here is equal to this angle right there. Everybody see that? That's really, really important. Because what they do is they tell you, it says find x if um, angle FEG, the whole thing. Actually, on the test, I do have something like this, but I have it actually a little easier on the test than what this worksheet is. This one tells you the whole thing, which is 82. But watch, if this whole thing is 82, what's this little angle right here going to be? It's got to be half of it, right, which is 41. So that's got to be 41. What about this angle right here? That's got to be 41 as well, correct? But then it says angle FEC, which is this one right here. It says it's 5x plus 11. And it, they want you to solve for x. Well, you already know the angle, don't you? But you've got to find what x is. So what do you do with that 5x plus 11 and that 41? You set them equal to each other. That's right. I'll let you do that on your own, okay? So you set 5x plus 11 equals 41 because they are the same. Does that make sense? So you got to know what the word bisect means. It splits an angle into two equal parts. They tell you the whole angle, which is 82, so you know each of those split in half, and it's 41. They kind of tell you what this angle is. It's 5x plus 11. They ask you to solve for x, so you set this equal to 41, then you're good to go. Does that make sense? That's not so hard, is it? All right. Draw the things out. Notice. 
Do you see all the arcs I put on here and put in all the numbers? You should be doing that stuff yourself. Make sure you go to the fifth period um, YouTube video to watch the ones that we didn't hit today in here, okay? Be ready for it, please, tomorrow. Jaden Carl 